Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my editing job properly, you should be watching me in black and white right now. As you will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you read any of it, the description. This is the latest episode of my One Row in a Palette series and today I am absolutely delighted to be collabing with my beautiful YouTube daughter Chelsea and we decided to show some love to the Paulina palette. So if you want to find out which colours we ended up with, because we chose each other's rows, we didn't have control over that this time. What a blather on at you this time, this time and uh, most importantly, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then my friend, as I have said, uh, for some considerable time now and I'm wholly backed up by Sammy the Sloth Straw Grab a drink Grab a snack Put your feet up and enjoy Because here it comes Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Uh, it has literally just started bucketing it down outside. So I'm expecting my light levels to go up and down. I'm also expecting Hubby to come bursting through the door any minute because he was mowing the lawn. I'm guessing the rain means he's going to have to stop because he'd better not be mowing the lawn in the rain with an electric mower. Hmm. Anyway, you will have seen from the title and from my intro I'm just double checking which row it is that I'm doing yeah. right. doing a collab with my adopted YouTube daughter Chelsea because we discussed the fact I'm old enough to be her mam and she's like well you can be my YouTube mam then so I'm like right great fabulous um, She's got the Paulina palette, I've got the Paulina palette, we both love Paulina, we both love Blush Tribe, which is now Miali Beauty. Uh, my code that I had with Blush Tribe works with Miali still. Uh, it's not affiliated, I don't earn from it, I don't get any kickbacks from it at all, but you save money. And we decided we were going to do a one row in a palette. Um, and we chose each other's rows. And the one that Chelsea chose for me is the middle column, straight down. So we've got Sige, which is obviously Paulina's dog. We've got Thingaling, which is the word she uses when she can't remember the English. And Paulina herself. That is a duplicate shade because that was in the Full Fusion palette which I also have. So that's the three colours that I've got to play with. I will just swatch them on the back of my hand for you. Live swatching, there we go, look, see? See how stunning they are? Look at that. And you saw, I wasn't like round and round and round and round. I literally went one, two in each one of those. And you look at the beautiful depth of colour and that you get from this. So, although uh, Blush Tribe doesn't exist anymore, Miali Beauty does. Uh, so far I've only used one of her palettes but it is absolutely to the same quality as her previous palettes were because she had to change supplier that's why she 
had to close blush tribe. Um, Paulina still exists. And the fact that we both own these palettes still exists. Right. This is a teaching channel. Um, I'm going to pop some text up on screen so that if people are fast forwarding through, hopefully they'll see the text and read it and that will answer some of their questions because I'm still getting comments from people some of them quite rude because they all seem to be held back for me to review um, <clears throat> about why I zoom in so close etc I zoom in close because if you watch me on a phone screen and your eyesight's not what it could be you need to be zoomed in close plus with my chronic pain some of the faces that I pull would be very distracting for you so it's best you just see my eyes. Also because of my chronic pain, I go at a speed that even beginners can keep up with. Uh, I tend not to speed anything up or cut anything out so that you can see the whole eye application in real time. Gives you a much better indication of how long it's going to take you to complete the look. Basically, However long the film is, cut that in half, that's roughly how long the eye look takes. The rest of it is me chatting to you at the beginning, me chatting to you at the end. <laughs> you know, chit chat, chit chat. Right, I'm going to insert a clip just now where I discuss the difference between a deep set and hooded lids. They are different. Eyeshadow wears on them in very much the same way, which is why so many people with deep set eyes think they have hooded lids. But the way you actually need to apply your makeup is different on hooded and deep set. So I'm going to talk you through that. Uh, it's going to be very up close and personal, just my eyes. And then once that's done, I'll see you at the other end and I will start popping some coloured pigments onto my eyelids. Huge clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer and then I buff it over mm. with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, 
you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, the only rule with the one row in the palette is you can only use the row you've been given. You don't have to use all of them, but obviously with three colours I'm going to use all of them. Uh, but what you do use can only be in that row. Right, um, I think I'm going to start off with Sigge. And I'm going to go in with this uh, quite small blending brush. I always hold the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on my eye as possible and we're going to do the Viennese Waltz Blend which is natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get there and then a reverse turn to come back. The reason I do this, I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 12 stone, that's over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves. But I know 20 year olds that have that issue that have always been slim. It can just be a genetic thing. So by doing the Viennese waltz rather than the windshield wiper, you're less likely to get your eyelid folding over on itself and getting those telltale white lines. Now I do get them this side because of this super deep creasing I've got just here. Um, and I do have to treat that lid slightly differently when I'm applying colour to the actual mobile lid itself, but I'll show you that when we get there. Right, like I said, I'm going to start off with Sigge, which is the green. And I should start applying this, and then start chatting to you. Hmm, rain stopped. Okay, I'm going to start just above where my natural, well, quite a long way above where my natural crease would be actually. I'm just going to start building this green up. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. And if it hasn't been a good one, well then I hope tomorrow is better for you. Just going to take this green about maybe two thirds of the way along or just over halfway maybe yeah just over halfway take it to about there I think greens are notoriously difficult to create but one of the things that I love about Selma's formulas be it Blush Tribe or Miali Beauty 
is that greens, purples and blues are my favourite colours which are the most difficult to create mattes in. She does fantastically. So that makes me a very happy girl. I'm just going to gently buff the edge of this. And soften that edge a bit. If you're at the start of your day, I hope it's going to be fabulous, darling. So you can see I've taken that down to just above where my my bow lid becomes visible. And I'm going to do the same sort of thing over on this side. Just marking how far across I need to go. The reason I always do one eye then the other rather than completing one eye and then completing the other one is because your eyes are not symmetrical unless you photoshop them when you're done like James Charles does. So there's times when with my fibro for example or hay fever allergy one lid can be slightly more swollen than the other in which case you have to do a slightly different shape to make them match so that they look like a pear when your eyes are open. Not a pear as in the fruit, but a pear as in a couple. Mm. You know what I mean. So, Chelsea. I'd watched her for quite a while. She does amazing, vibrant looks. That girl is not afraid of using a bit of colour at all, which is fantastic. Um, I love the fact that she is just so confident with using colours because all too often you see young girls nowadays and all they want to do is, you know, a very, very neutral look on their eyes or, you know, they, they think a a black and white smoky eye is, is like, oh wow. Whereas she can make a palette stand up and sing. Um, and to have that ability at such a young age is just... Well, it shows you her artistic levels as well because she, she knows which colours work well together, you know. Um, when I was her age, I didn't have that skill. Um, I learned it mainly when I was working for the print company. I'm just cleaning my brush off on a clean washcloth. I don't like using colour switches, Aww. they're too harsh on the bristles. Um, yes, yeah, so I've watched her for a while and I've commented a few times. I'm going to go into Paulina. Such a shame you can't get this palette anymore. Now, if you're going to blend two colours together, to get them to blend as seamlessly as possible, the first thing you need to do is have your brush half on the colour you've already laid down and half on the lid that you're going to apply colour to. And really concentrate on blending that line. That was my fault. Uh, a little bit of my cellar water. I'll take that off. Can't see what I'm doing now. Let's just pop a little bit of the crown pebble back on over the top. A bit more. Yeah, so really concentrate on that blend first. Be 
because for some reason, for me at least, if I start here and then work across, I get a much more seamless blend than if I start further out. And I'm going to bring this right down. And you can see blending the pink with the green has given us this gorgeous sort of tealy, steely blue in the middle, which is a little bit lush. job tell your mother. Yeah so um, I messaged Chelsea a while ago now, a good while ago, asking if she'd like to do one of my pick films and she was like oh my goodness yes and we were chatting away and that's when we realised that I was old enough to be her mum and I had a good old chuckle about that. And uh, we've done quite a few films together now. Pick series, I'm pretty sure we've, we've both been involved in bigger collabs together. Um, I think I've done a palette bingo with her. And obviously, she's now joining me in my One Row in a Palette series. Which I am absolutely delighted about. Okay, now it's stopped raining, it's started to get really warm out here. I might have to put the fan on in a minute. I'm really struggling just recently with. Um, with the air quality around here. I don't know what's going on. Obviously it's nowhere near as bad as it is in America, thank goodness. Um, but it feels like the air's too thick and I can't get a full lungful in, if that makes any sense at all to anybody. Um, I've struggled with that ever since I had pneumonia a few years back, so I react to air pressures. Maybe we've got a storm coming that could explain it, because we had a storm this morning and I was struggling like this last night and it cleared up after the storm, so perhaps we've got a storm coming, maybe that's the issue here. Right. I'm going to go in with thingling along my uh, mobile lid using a flat brush. Once I've applied the pigment to the brush, I will be wetting it. I'm using this one at the moment, Obsession Fit Fix. You can use anything. You can use a moisturising spray like Mario Badescu or Fix Plus. Um, you can use setting spray, priming spray, finishing spray. You can even save an empty bottle, fill it up with fresh water each time you do your makeup and use that. Just don't ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush because you'll kill the pigment. Love this shade thingaling. Really love it. Such a stunning lavender. Actually, I think it might be more lilac than lavender. Lavender tends to have a bit more of a blue base than this has got. Right, ferrule is now wet, so tuck that into your knuckles and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture coming down and loosening the bristles on your brush, because then you won't have a brush, you will have a stick. The reason I like these little tiny flat brushes is they're really good for getting down when you've got deep set eyes like myself into that inner corner. 
And obviously I'm going to bring that up. And along the lid. Dry the brush. Go back in again. Rewet, redry, continue with the application. Now, I always wet shimmers regardless of the formula, regardless of the brand. I just find it gives you less fallout. And with some brands, it can brighten the shimmer up if you're not getting much reflection from it. Um, I'm not overly worried about fallout though. Because obviously I do my uh, foundation and everything afterwards. But look how pretty that is. Stunning. Right, dry the brush off. And now I'm going to repeat the same thing with the other eye. But as I explained to you earlier, I do have to treat my other eye a little bit differently. And I'm going to do the one thing I tell you not to do, which is pull your lid out straight. But when I do that, you'll see that I don't tug it out to my ear hole. I only literally put it out so that um, the lid is flat and as soon as I am done blending the pigment in I gently release the lid back down because if I don't do this what happens is the pigment builds up loosely in those deep creases that I've got there and then throughout the day as it dries it ends up flaking into my eyes and um, down my face and everything and it's A painful and B looks a bit messy so but I'm super glad that Selma decided to start another company up. Um, she'd already closed Blush Tribe down and then because basically her supplier with the coronavirus and everything, uh, with them being an Asian supplier, uh, she was having the issue that her supplier had actually gone bust. So she ended up closing Blush Tribe and unfortunately she'd done all of the final accounts and closing everything and everyone was like, oh no Selma, please don't go, we love your stuff, please don't go. So she decided to try and source a new supplier. Thankfully she found one and thankfully that supplier is as good as the previous one. But hence the name change in case you're wondering why she didn't just restart Blush Tribe because it would have been so much more paperwork to, to sort of unclose a business than it is to start a new one. So, there we go. Right, I'm going to pause you while I go and apply foundation etc. And then I'll be back to finish off the rest of this eye look. Now, for me it's going to be a little while. For you, my darlings, it's going to be completely instant. So I'll see you right after this wibbly bit. Hey beauties, I am a back. I did cheat a little bit. It's come over very dark again. Expect rain, storms, goodness knows what. Um, I did cheat a little bit because I wanted my brows to be dark kind of match this bit 
So I went in with Aubergine, which is the deep purple, which is not in my row, but I'm bending the rules just a smidge. Right, I've been trying that um, fake freckle thing from I think it's Barry M. Yeah, Barry M. I found that if I put it on after I've powdered, no matter how quickly I then tap it, it doesn't soften it up a bit. So I have to put it on before I've powdered and then tap it out, which is fine. But then when I put the powder on over the top, I feel like, I don't know whether you can see it. What do you think? Are they... Anyway, flat top brush. I have no idea what I was going on about then. I'm really sorry. Right. Can I grab some of the green? And go about halfway along with the green. Yes, I'm flinching that side because obviously I have no peripheral vision and the number of times I have poked myself in the eyeball. Be a millionaire by now. Uh, then I'm going to dip into the Paulina. And put that at the front end, so mirroring what I've got at the top and just trying to smudge the two together there. it so far. This next bit will either break it or make it. I'm going in with this brush. This is from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Flat topped and chunky but you can use any smudger brush. I just really love this one. And I'm going to dip into Thingaling. <laughs> Tap off and I'm going to very carefully try and use this shimmer to buff along the lower lash line and soften that edge a little bit hopefully without getting too much fallout from the shimmer yeah, that worked I can't wait to see what Chelsea's done I know she's going to have blown my look right out of the water. She's just so talented. Hmm. Oh, I like that. I feel like a peacock. Or a bird of paradise. Or some kind of exotic orchid that costs a fortune and dies within a day. Yeah, I don't understand what I'm going on about either. Don't worry about it. I am going to go in with Ofra's Pillow Talk, which is the slightly pink toned white base but with a pink shift highlighter. This is just a cheap lip brush. I bought it over 10 years ago from eBay. Um, but I like using a lip brush because. You can get right up under the tail of your brow. And in a corner, and you know I like to bring mine along and just blend it in under the lower lash line. Like so so pretty right my lovelies I'm going to pause you one last time 
and I'm going to chuck some more of that highlight on the hair points of my face. Uh, put some mascara on, put some lippy on and I'll be back with my finished look. For you darlings, once again, it is going to be instant. Hey my lovelies, it is so dark out there right now, I am pretty sure my white balance is shot to hell right now, which I will try to tweak with in editing but I don't like changing how things look. As you can see the Pillow Talk highlighter is still rain, hmm. glowing for the gods. And in honour of Paige from Seeking Alexandria, I got a triple lip chin. <laughs> Love that girl. Uh, right, uh, I put a little bit of the um, BH Cosmetics Power Pencil in teal in my waterline. Uh, I'm actually finding I can wear those without it making my eyes stream, which is amazing. The, the mascara is the Catrice Glamondol Volume Waterproof Mascara. Absolute dupe for how bad girl bang leaves my lashes looking, but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. And the lippy is Fenty Beauty Unveil. I finally picked up one of her stunners, but these are a bitch to store because they don't fit where I've got all my lipsticks. So, thanks for that Rihanna. But this is about the finished look using Paulina One Rowina palette. And uh, how do you think I've done? What do you think, Chelsea? Do I make a good job of your choice? You like? You don't like? If you're a regular viewer, uh, it'd be awesome if you could hit that like button for me leave me a comment, maybe even share, it really does help with the algorithm on YouTube. YouTube are still deleting people left, right and centre. Um, I think so far this month overall with people that are realising they've been unsubscribed and resubscribing new subscribers and YouTube deleting people. Uh, overall I'm down seven this month. Just words fail me. Um, but in the hope that YouTube might actually change it back again in a fortnight without telling anybody, please double check you're subscribed, check your notifications are on. Uh, mine all got knocked back to personalised rather than being all notifications, so you might want to double check that as well. Even though at the moment it seems that they're not sending emails out. Um, unless somebody actually comments on a film that you've put up or replies to a comment. Speaking of which, I was so excited. Samantha March commented on one of my films. Oh! Once you've uh, done all those good things and... I better put a headphone warning up. Let's hope I remember to do that. Do please go across and check out Chelsea's look and see which colours I chose for her. Wow, I love this highlight. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, please go across and double check Chelsea's film out and drop her a like. Subscribe to her if you're not already. She does amazing, amazingly talented work. Drop her a comment, let her know you're here from 4F Beauty and just be as nice to her as you always are to me. Please and thank you. Uh, if you're here from Chelsea's channel or you've tripped over this film some other way, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it here. Uh, I hope I haven't put you off with the way that I blether, but apparently, although I blether, I do it in a very comforting voice. So, maybe one will offset the other. It'd be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family. It's super easy to do. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey. 
and then you can ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications. As I said, fingers crossed you'll actually get some emails through. But if you don't, and you're looking for a bit of me time, I have so many other films you can watch. Um, I've got more One Rose in a Palette. I've got other collabs. I've got makeup reviews, tutorials, challenges, tags. I even read you my favourite poem. So you're going to find something there to interest you, I hope. Basically, as I've said for some considerable time now, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist, get comfy and enjoy, my darlings. Right, as ever, beautiful ones, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.